Hi, welcome back. So this class, I'm going to show you step by step how I made a calendar. We're going to go over some details of laying out the page correctly, placing an image, and then how to put in tables. Tables is something that is available in InDesign. I'm not going to get too in depth of what it can do, but I'm going to go over some of it. So if you're on this top uh, bar of, of your screen, you'll see it's InDesign, you'll see File, Edit, Layout, so layouts for pages, inserting pages, all about laying out your page. Font is font, I mean type is for fonts. An object is to move or transform scale objects, right? So if this was a circle, I would be able to transform, bring it forward, bring it back. I guess this is a gloss glossing over these uh, window drop downs. So now we're at tables. I can create a table. Uh, these will light up once I made a, a table and I can set up tables. I can uh, adjust and change rows and columns, fills and headers and footers. Um, and cell options, you, these are the things that you can put into the cell. And obviously there's some, uh, you can insert a cell, you can delete a cell, so this can get really complicated as you go down. We're going to kind of just hit the surface of what a table can do. So this is going to be a quick lesson uh, about tables. So first, again, I made my two um, rectangle fill tool. I used this and created it the length of the page for my image and the bottom the length of the page for my calendar. Uh, I will place in the calendar and I will place in an image. I, here's my image. I placed it in. I ask you to go look for one. So maybe you want to pause it this time and think about your birth date and what image you want to do. You don't have to do a cake. If you want to, feel free to go find one. And then I put somewhere in there, you have to put the actual day of the month. Not the day of the month, the, the name of the month. So please uh, make sure you figure out in your design of your image where you want to put uh, April, May, June, July, whatever uh, month you, you were born. So I'm April, so I put mine right in the center of this white cake. I also made sure it kind of related to the color in the background. And then I'm going to go over more in depth about how I made my header and put all the dates in. And then how we're going to make a style sheet still to get all of these name numbers quickly in place. I also want you to call out special days in your month of your birthday and your birthday. And you really can do whatever you want. These are just a couple of ways I did it. Uh, you can put an image in here if you want to. You can design something that goes on the days of special uh, occasions. Um, that I really want to give uh, freedom to creativity to. But I'm just going to show you an overall how this works. So first off, now that you kind of had an, a brief look of what I did, um, let's go make your first... Uh, Let's make your layout. So we're going to make a new document because we're going to pretend that my document's not there anymore. And you're going to go and open up InDesign at this time. And once you open up InDesign, uh, you'll get a new document. And we can open a new document for you. So the first thing, let's do print, letter, inches, this is the correct orientation, portrait, not landscape. We're only going to do one page, unlike mine. You don't need to have facing. Uh, and the only other thing is margins, you can have 0.5. And that's it. Pause this if you need to um, work on this. Oh, one more thing. Please name this birthday calendar. underscore your name, last name. So again, pause it if you still need this information. If not, hit create. 
So once I made my file and I found my images, I created a folder called calendar. And in my calendar folder, I had my InDesign and I have my link of my image, which is the cake. All right. So here's what you would see when you just open a blank page. The first thing we're going to do is what I wanted, if you saw back here on the first, uh, the image part is a little bit shorter than the table part. So this, you can see what the sizes are when you, when you click on your rectangle. And we have eight and a half and four and a, and a half. So let's go to our new page. Let's grab our rectangle frame tool. And remember this is already, this is already eight and a half. So I can just go directly to the edge. And you might be able to see, see how my, uh, I'm moving around that corner and there's numbers. That'll tell you exactly what number uh, you are. So it already says I'm good on the eight and a half, but I'm not good at the 4.5. So if I keep scrolling, I can get it really close. There we go. To double check it's correct, I, I would look up here. So the bottom is a little bit different. So I'm going to start from the bottom and drag up. Again, I got this nice handy uh, uh, width and height rule that tells me how large um, my rectangle is that I pulled out. I know I have the width right because it says five by eight, but the height we want six by four. So it's almost there. There we go. Double check that that's correct. And it is. All right, so we have our top, which will be an image, and our bottom, which will be the table. So let's start here and create, let's place the image. So file, place, remember you've already selected your image. It's in links within that folder on your desktop or somewhere that you know where you can find it. I select it, I open it. All right, so this is a very big image. If I double click on it, see how big it is? We can see that I might even need to go back a little to see the whole thing. So to make sure that when I drag it to be smaller to fit in, I want to hit shift as I click and drag. And then I use my mouse, my hand grabber comes up and I just kind of want to center this into my page. So just try to get it as centered as I can. And I can look up here and I can see that, that I didn't uh, squish it or drag it. But I think I'm just going to change this to 82 and 82. So just make sure that you've got your images equal. I just simplify it to round, rounding it to the nearest number percentage. And the other thing I just want you to realize is, see how I'm definitely on the image? I can see this bar. If I click here, look how it just says 100%, 100%. You must click on the image, double click onto the image to get the orange to see if the scaling is correct. If it's not, and this is unlinked to, to keep uh, the portion correct, it's unlinked, and I change this to 120, See how it's stretched? You can see the candles are really fat. I don't want that. I don't want any stretching or dist distortion. So it un I would want it to be uh, back to normal and I would change this to the correct size. So you can see how that really distorted if you drag it wrong. And I'm gonna center it the best I can. So now we have the image where I want it. I kind of keep it in the margin, right? So it's right at the tip of the margin it's laying the plate is kind of feeling like it's sitting on the bottom of my image box and the next thing i want to do is i want to add a type so i'm gonna drag my little type box in here i'm going to just write out april i did lowercase oops a p r l L. 
And then I increase the size. So I'm going to start with 30 and then go up to see how large I need to make it. Before I go too crazy, I want to pick the typeface out next because if I don't uh, pick out the typeface, um, it might become too big. And I was using Super Claritin. It's a fun, kind of playful, I think, bold type that is provided through um, your computer. It's one of your uh, type uh, system type fonts. I'll leave this open a little bit longer so you can see it. Super Claritin, if you want to use it for your typeface. So everyone should have a typeface and an image for their birthday month. I also select it. I'm going to change the color. And I can do that easy by grabbing um, the eyedropper and I can select the color background. So now I got it the same color as that. So that's pretty much what I have on this second part. I kept the lowercase a. Next I'm going to work on starting to load um, the calendar. The one thing I need to know on the calendar is how many uh, rows and columns. So columns, I have how many days a week? I have seven, so I'm going to need seven columns. And usually within a month, depending on the month you have, you really don't have more than five rows. So make sure you double check your calendar to make sure that um, you know how many rows uh, you need. So I only need one, two, three, four, five. So I'm going to go next, knowing seven across and five down is what I need. I'm going to select this square and I'm going to go into tables and I'm going to hit create. This will dialog will pop up. So remember I was telling you, you, should, you need to know your rows and you need to do your columns. And I also want one header. So I'll leave that up for you. Remember to double check uh, if you're doing 2019 or if you're doing 2020. Whatever you want to do, just double check how many rows you're going to need uh, for that month. It might be less. All right, we'll always be seven columns because we have seven days in the week. All right, next let's hit OK. And then we're going to drop it in here. So it's kind of staying within the margin. Now that we have it in there, um, it came in its own box. We can probably just get rid of this second uh, box. That was just helping us kind of make sure we understand how we want to divide it up. So now we want to start adding some things. So what did I do here? First, I changed, I started adding type into each one of what you call cells. And then I tried to make it more prominent that it's a title by adding this whole bar in one color. All right, so let's go back. So you probably could go up to here and then add text and your text information would come up. But what I think you can also do is just click on it and you can type uh, and then I can select it and see how my control panel changes so I can center it, I can center it, align it in the center so see how that changed? So it was centered on the top and now I centered it within the middle. I could center it on the bottom if I wanted to, or I can leave it up on the top. But I'm gonna center it in the middle. You can also play around with these. These would change it to the side. You might have a funny chart that you would need to do that for. And then um, I can still change this, this 
size. I'm going to change it to a little bit smaller because Wednesday is a little tough. And I also want to change it to, I think, let's just go with uh, Claritin again. But we're going to keep it regular, not bold. So this one is more bold. And this will be regular. Okay? So that's a cell. We worked within the cell. Now we go to this cell and we write the next day. And then the next. Now it's up to you. Some people put Sunday here and uh, Saturday is the end of the week. I always kind of see it as Monday is my first day of the week and this is how I live my life. Um, so you can change it any way you would like. If you would like to change it as the standard uh, uh, calendar where Sunday is first, that's fine. Just as long as you have seven calendar days. So again, I can center it and center it and I can make sure the right font is selected so on and so on um, I can uppercase it too and I can change it the size now remember we we do have style paragraphs so if I wanted to I could select this and I could add it double check it and see what I have. So it's got Claritin, regular, uh, 10 points. Uh, letting is 12, which is fine. I like to always do optical, uh, and we want all caps. So this is already setting it up for you. I hit, oh, and let's change this to days of the week. Or just, you can put days, day, okay? So that's for all of these. So I should be able to select this and just go like this, right? So we're having a little problem with Thursday. So I think we need to change this to a little bit smaller letter form. So it's, it's super easy, right? The whole idea of um, using this is that I can change it and I'll change all of them. So let's see what nine looks like. That's better, Wednesday got in here. So the only thing that we didn't see if we could do in here is the centering, um, which we, which is fine, we can just do this. In here, but we're not getting the full. There we go. So nice way of, I didn't realize that you could do that, but you can select them all and then line them all up. All right, so I've set my uh, paragraph style, right? They're all the same. I have super cleared in regular. This should all be nine. Uh, it should be centered and it should be centered within. These are called cells. And uh, this here is the fill and stroke. So I could take off the stroke and I could add a fill. And I like to add a fill from here so that it looks and relates to the back of my picture. The other thing to do is you can, if you double click right on the line, you can change the size uh, making this more of a header. So how did I do that again? I kind of click on the cell and then I kind of make sure I'm not on type. I click on the cell and then I kind of pull across, which will open this panel. 
So I click on the cell and then I ignore that it's type and drag it across. So try that. It's kind of tricky, but once you get it, you get it. And then you can click and just drag across the square and you can change squares individually. So try it and try to just so you get comfortable. Try to change each one of these to a different color. Kind of help you get a little more control. The other thing you can change is you can change the line around it. So if you wanted to change your calendar and make all the lines bright pink, you could. So I'm going to change these to have none. And we got some of these lines, the pink, and some of them not. But see how they're starting to change to a pink color. So see that? We got some of the lines in the pink. So try to change the lines and the fill within the squares. Again, uh, it just click on it. It will start it will immediately allow you to type but if you keep dragging you'll be able to just fill a box or a cell if you're having trouble with it I think it's better to just get used to it and try to figure it out you could try to do fill and stroke here and uh, this is some sections that you can do could do it different. So if you wanted color, you could change it here. Um, you can change the treatment here. You can add fill. So I added this right here. This part right here is the cell stroke, and this is the cell fill. And I can click here to preview. See how it just affected that? And all I needed to do is click on that box. So I'm going to try this again, show you again. So if I just want to affect this box right here, I click on it and I get the uh, type tool that pops up. I can go to box and I can go, if I want to change the stroke, I can go to stroke and fill. And this is the fill area, so I can just add a fill. And this is the stroke area if I want to change the stroke. All right? And I could change the weight if I wanted to. It's all kinds of things. I prefer just getting used to just clicking and kind of dragging over it and it changing up here because I'm more familiar with these little box icons. Okay? So play around with that. It can be a little tricky. I'm going to undo a little bit because I don't want all these crazy colors and I don't want a sample. So this is where I was uh, before I started showing you just how to manipulate a cell. The next thing is, so let's go look at what I had set up, is trying to figure out what to do with these numbers. Oh, one other thing. I want to change these to white. So let's see if we can go to our style sheet. Double click. Let's see if we can't change our color to white. And voila, all of them have been changed. Hence, again, how great the paragraph style sheet is, right? Immediately, I don't have to drag over each one. It selects and changes all of them. All right, so we're going to do number next. So the next thing, let's just, um, let's figure out what we want to do for a number. This is obviously one, but double check your calendar. Make sure you're starting on the right day. You might have a different month, and your month calendar date for your birthday might be here. Okay, so you got to start on your first day of your month for your birthday. This is my birthday. So Monday, we're going to do one. And I've already checked my calendar. Two, three. Okay, so I'm going to go up to here because I've already done it here. And it would take me a long time to fill all this in so that... Um, you don't need to watch me do that. All right, so let's adjust this one. So the first one, I just want to use what's here. And then I'll 
add a new style sheet to create all of them. Okay, so the first one, again, I'm going to use just one typeface. I'm going to use Claritin. I'm going to make it black. And let's see how large we can get this. Sometimes I like to just use the arrows to get the size that I want. I think that looks good. And then I'm just going to, I think I'm going to keep it in the corner. I changed it a little bit from what it was. Uh, I like to hit optical. And I'm actually going to bring it down just a smidge. And then I'm going to change the color. And I'm going to actually not do it this way. I'm just going to select the color. That, so how I did that was, again, I selected it. And then I got the eyedropper and I clicked on the eyedropper to change the color. Sometimes if I'm like unsure which tool I have on, I always go back to the selection tool to click off of everything. So I've set up my type, right? I have it everywhere I want it. This is the one I want. Um, so that I can just copy all of these, all I want to do is uh, create a new. And then this should have selected all the things that I have up here. So it's got Claritin. I wanted black. I wanted 29, yep, 29 points. Uh, Letting is fine. Optical is great. Normal case. Everything else looks good. So if you wanted underline, you could add it underline. Um, anything you want, you can kind of play around. If you want to change the colors within here, you could. And then now it's just selecting the type. I forgot to do one thing else, which is name it. So let's name number. So I have day and number. And again, I'm just selecting the letter and hitting the number. So much easier than than eye dropping it, than changing it here, changing it to black, finding the typeface. This is such an easier step to do. All right, so we've got I've got my first week in, and I can just do the rest. Eight, nine. I guess I can't help myself from not doing the whole thing. It's so easy. I wonder if I could do this. Look at that. Uh, again, the paragraph style. How nice. 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. If I messed up on numbers, sorry. I'm just trying to go fast so that I'm not wasting time just showing you how to do this again i'm just clicking on uh what is called the cell uh and then adding the numbers in uh six whoa that's not right and then i'm just going to double check because i don't know if they're yeah okay so let's see if i can do all the cells and change the number. Brilliant. All right, so now I have my, my calendar even closer to be done. And again, like I said, that at any time I can decide to change the size. Like, maybe that's just a little too big. So maybe 24 is better. I don't think I saved it. So let's go back to numbers. Gotta make sure you hit OK. Yeah, I didn't. So let's change it to 24 and then hit OK. Nice. Now I want to go on my birth date. So remember when I said try to figure out how to do this, click on the whole cell? So I'm going to change the color for this. And I'm going to change, sorry about that, update. Uh, maybe to yellow for me. And I think I have Easter Sunday. I wanted to put a little color on and I want to do a little um, well, that's not a great color for this 
Good Friday or Passover. So those are the colors I have. Um, now I just go back because I'm lazy and I'm just going to copy this in. So you'll type this out. So I just come back here, start a new line, but see how large my type is? If I paste this in, you're not going to see it. It might be because it's also the same color, so watch out for that. All right, so that worked. You could even change this back to basic, or better yet, let's go to numbers and add a character and change this to uh, white. So this allows you to just change one element. I'm just changing just the color on this. Now this pops out and the color of the background stays in. This one we can leave and it's Easter. And I can change it here. Since these are smaller types, I haven't, I didn't make a specialty uh, paragraph. And then the last is birthday. And I'm going to keep it uh, this color. Earth. And I'm not going to have it on black. I'm going to have it on white. just to change it up. So maybe these are all light. And maybe I could have made a style sheet for this. So maybe I should think about going to paragraphs and I guess copy, just some added copy that I'm putting in. And see, it has all the information I want. Optical, light, hit OK. And then we can just make sure all of these actually are under this. All right. So that's going to change it to white. I can do an override character here, changing it to a different color. So color, maybe we'll make this one pink. And then maybe I change the number to pink also. An image, the name of the month, and then make sure you highlight this and take the lines off of it. So this is what it looks like now. So this is our header, and then this is the base. All right, so I hope you guys have fun with this and uh, enjoy creating your first. Aha, so I just double, do you see how I grabbed that for the last thing? And I made sure I got rid of that last center line. I really want that just to be a header looking thing. All right, so play around with this. Enjoy, make your birthday month, 